Hello everyone. Welcome to Paper Crafting Playdate. My name is Robin Armbrecht at Really Robin Stamps. You are joining me today, July 7th, 2023 for episode 95 of Paper Crafting Playdate. And we have a hodgepodge of things that we are going to talk about today. I'm going to do some different things. So July is national, uh, not national, international watercolor month. And so um, I thought I, we could use a little coloring therapy today. So we're going to use watercolor pencils. And then I have a couple fun folds, easy fun folds for you. So like I said, it's kind of a hodgepodge. So let's take a look at the table. And if you are watching me live, I'm so excited that you're here with me. I wish I was watching you stamping today. You know how you some days you just need that inspiration. Um, I hope that you will find some today, but I need some too. I need to to um, watch some other people create for a little bit. Hello everyone, say hello to your stamping friends in the comments. It's great to have you here. Hi Letty, hi Cheryl, hey Donna, hi Julie, hi Virginie, I love that name. Hi Rose, hi Cindy, hi Jonna. Faye, Mary, Wendy, Susan, Lynn, Luann, thank you for joining me, my friends. I'm so glad you're here. So let me show you, first of all, some beautiful cards that I received in the mail recently. This is from Judy Cully. I love this. It's a get well card, obviously. Um, and she made a joy fold and she did it uh, vertically. I love this. It's a nice little surprise. Thank you, Judy. This is really pretty. I'm gonna have to remember, I always think of a joyful this way, um, but I really like this. I like this version a lot, so I'm gonna have to make one of these. Thank you, Judy. And this uh, is um, one of those adorable fence post cards. This came from Australia from Heather. I'm gonna get this closer to the camera here so you can see her amazing focal point cluster. Look at that goodness there. This is an amazing card, Heather. I'm so honored to be the recipient of it. Look at that open frame and all her greeneries and her little accents here, the pops of foil, her embellishments. It's just gorgeous. Thank you so much. I just, I haven't made one of these cards either. One of these, um, I think they're called fence post cards. I think they have two names. I can't think of what the other name is. Maybe one of you will know. Um, anyway, awesome. I love these two cards so much. Make me very happy. Thank you. All right, before we get started on our hodgepodge of things today, um, Online exclusive started yesterday. Here's some things that are already um, sold out for the time being. These are just a few of the things on this flyer. If you're on my email list, you got this flyer and you can go directly online, stampinup.com and you can um, look for online exclusives and see things that are just online, just released, um, kind of exciting um, to get new products kind of part, part way through um, catalog releases. So that's fun. And since it's a new month, I have a new hostess code. My hostess code this month, I'm calling it Thanks for Sticking With Me Kit. Um, you're gonna get to try out some adhesives. So we're gonna talk a little bit about them today. You're gonna get a um, two six by six pieces of adhesive sheets. You're gonna get a whole piece of uh, masking paper. You get a one sheet of foam adhesive sheet. You're gonna get half a piece of foam strip adhesive sheets and some dimensionals. So we'll talk about what some of these things do as we're working today. Okay, so I'm going to stand up. Okay, so the first card we're going to make is a fun fold, and it's an oldie but goodie, a diorama card. 
But let's talk about watercolor pencils. So I have my watercolor pencils here. So there's two assortments of watercolor pencils that Stampin' Up! carries right now, assortment one and assortment two. Assortment one just got reconfigured a little bit. Um, a couple of the, I think it was really only three colors that re got removed and replaced by um, other colors like Fresh Freesia. Um, so this is kind of a basic set, so we'll talk about that. And then there's an assortment two, which has um, a lot of brights in it, so it's kind of like a supplementary color um, set of watercolor pencils. And so I thought we would talk about watercolor pencils first for um, International Watercolor Month because these are such a really easy um, way to watercolor and they're really foolproof. You may, even if you don't have Stampin' Up! watercolor pencils, you may have watercolor pencils um, hanging around and forget about using them. And so I thought we would just remind ourselves how awesome they are. And one of the things I recommend, let's say you're going to purchase um, a new set of watercolor pencils, is that you take the time and you um, do some homework, right? <laughs> we gotta do our homework. And what um, this does when you take some time to swatch your markers and your watercolor pencils, watercolor crayons, whatever you have for coloring implements, is that um, you get to know the colors better, how they shade, how they work, so that the next time you go to color, you have a really easy reference to know exactly what colors you wanna combine um, if you wanna do some shading. So this is assortment one. This is the one that's new in the catalog only because they replaced, um, they replaced, I think there was Bermuda Bay in the older set and they replaced it with Fresh Freesia. Um, I think they, they changed out the blue and then they added Pecan Pie in there. So we've got these beautiful browns. This is just a nice basic set. So let me show you how I did this. I just took my one inch circle punch and I punched a hole so I could have this kind of little masking piece. And then I just took my watercolor pencil and traced that. I'm gonna bring this in. The grooves on my, the little grains on my desk show up when I'm using these pencils. So I have to make sure I have something smooth underneath. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take my pencil and color in half of this circle like that. So first off, one tip um, for watercolor pencils, when you get a brand new set, you might just want to um, either just give it a little um, turn in a pencil sharpener or on scratch paper, just kind of um, rotate the tip as you're kind of uh, coloring. Just sometimes there's a little bit of a coating on the end of your watercolor pencils. And so you might notice it seems a little waxy at first. So you have to kind of get that initial, get the pencil started. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And then since this is basic white paper, the best way to watercolor with watercolor pencils on basic white paper is with a blender pen. So these are amazing kind of clear inked markers. So now you just pick up the color. And kind of um, spread it around and this will also give you practice leaving those little highlights, right? So definitely do your homework. Okay, so there's my finished assortment one on basic white paper. So let's do some actual coloring. So I 
took the Zany Zoo set. And these are the two little guys that I um, stamped and cut out. So when you are using a blender pen with watercolor pencils, the best ink to use is the Stazon ink because this is an alcohol ink and so water will not make it run. Um, and anytime you add water with a blender pen or paintbrush, obviously you don't want your black ink to run. So these have been stamped and stays on, and now we're going to color and blend. So let me show you how I colored our little singing turtle. So I am gonna take pecan pie and early espresso. These are both from assortment one. And the first thing I'm gonna do is very lightly just color with pecan pie. Anytime you press really hard with a pencil, as you know, um, just from like writing in a notebook, you get that indentation in the paper. And the same thing is true with your watercolor pencils, especially if they're brand new and they have a sharp point. So that's another reason to kind of take the time and just kind of um, around the tip of your watercolor pencil so that you get more surface area right on the tip to color with. So don't press too hard. And then I'm gonna take the darker early espresso and I'm gonna just add that darker color around the outside. And then kind of right on where his arms are and legs are coming out of the shell. We want that to be a little bit darker. Okay, so there's my brown. Let me zoom in. I bet that would really help. Let me move that. I bet that's better. Sorry about that. And now let's do some greens. So I've got um, granny apple green and I'm going to do bottom in under part of the shell lightly with granny apple green and then I'm going to take garden green and just go where these lines are here and then I'm also going to go around the shell so this will be the main shell color here and then with basic gray, I'm going to put those little um, tortoise spots in gray and we'll do the microphone in gray. So why I like um, to start with watercolor pencils, if you're just learning how to watercolor, is it's very foolproof. Um, and you can go slow. It's um, different than using the... Um, stamp and blends the alcohol markers because you kind of have to work quickly because um, as the alcohol in those markers tends to you know evaporate and you got to kind of blend it together but with a watercolor pencil you can take as long as you want to kind of put that color down do your shading and then um, you can blend it together so actually watercolor pencils are great you could um, just color right you don't have to add the water to it. But when you do, it turns a watercolor pencil into like a, um, what I used to do as a child, which is uh, what, uh, paint with water, where the, the color would already be kind of um, in the image and then you would just take a paintbrush and move it around. And that's really what a watercolor pencil does. So let's start with the green. And I'm just gonna go over these lines and kind of blend that color, as soon as it gets wet, the watercolor pencil dissolves. And then you've got your color there. So now I'll just, I can continue on with the green here and I'm just gonna spread that dark garden green around the edge and then we'll take it to the shell. 
So I'm going to switch colors now. So I'm just going to blot the tip so that I can go to, into brown. I'm going to start with that dark and just blend out. And you can see right as the blender pen touches that color, it just um, dissolves that pencil. And because we used a couple colors there, we've got our, our shading. This is a little bit bigger um, area, so I'm going to start swirling my blender pen like that just to kind of spread it around. So the only thing that you don't want to do is keep going over and over and over um, the spots because the tip, the mark, this is like a brush tip marker and um, you, it, it can pull up the top, the surface of your basic white cardstock. So you want to just make sure you are light and gentle handed with that. And we'll make our microphone blue. I like to dab a lot of times instead of rub, especially if I wanna go back in and add some more color. So once this is dry, um, which doesn't take too long, let's just say I really wanted more shading on those little brown parts. You can just go back with your dry pencil and add some more. Um, and when you dab, I don't know what it is about, about it, but not only do you feel like you're an artist using a paintbrush, but um, it, it adds nice little like watercolor spots. Okay, so there's our little turtle. And I've already colored in the raccoon. I did two shades. I did the basic gray and the black pencil. So let's just make our little raccoon here. So leave me a comment. Uh, do you have watercolor pencils? Ha do you use them often? Where, what's your status with a watercolor pencil? Okay, so the balloons, I mostly just shaded on this um, right side here because that little mark is telling me there's a highlight on that side. So I'm gonna leave that side lighter. All right, so we have our little pieces for our diorama card. So let's put our card together. So this is a very easy, fun fold. Let's do that. We are going to zoom out. like that. Okay, so to make a diorama card, you need two pieces of cardstock that are four and a quarter by five and a half. Tiffany loves watercolor pencils. Letty, it is less intimidating. It absolutely is. Like I said, you've got lots of time. Gina Marie loves watercolor pencils. Cheryl prefers the ink and the water painters. Okay, that's good information. All right, so two pieces, four and a quarter by five and a half. And on each side, the four and a quarter side, you're going to score at a half inch and one inch rows you're going to have to drag them back out because you will be happy and you know what start with with swatching your colors um and as soon as you see those colors and how they blend it's going to immediately send you to a stamp set that you want to color all right so these are both scored at a half inch and one inch on each side so you do that on both pieces 
and then you zigzag the fold. You're gonna fold back and then forward. Okay, both of them. So I've got this one, so it looks like that. Anytime you work on your homework, you know, where you're cutting out things and figuring out stamp sets or swatching colors, it's a great activity to do when you sit down. You want to go in your craft room, but you don't maybe have the energy or the mental stamina to be creative. Get out those um, colors, um, markers, whatever you have, do some swatching, cut out pieces. So this is how it's going to go together like this and it's gonna create a little diorama. Obviously we need a window there, but then when it um, mails, it goes flat. So it just kind of pops up and down. So let's cut a hole in the front first. And I'm going to do a square. If you don't have shape dies, just use your paper cutter or an X-Acto knife. You can cut whatever shape you want. I'm gonna do a square. Oh, Mary, that is a great idea. She took watercolor pencils and blender pens along with stamp images when she was sitting, waiting at the hospital. I like to do that in the car sometimes too or um, or just take them on vacation. Okay, save this, put it in your focal point collection, focal point cluster collection of things. Okay, so that's gonna be the front. This is gonna be the back. We're gonna use tear tape to hook these together. So this is one of the adhesives that's really great when you're putting together something that you want, it's gonna get used a lot and you want it to stay put. It's very strong adhesive and it has a really easy way to, um, you know, to apply to boxes and things like that. All right, so our little turtle is going to be singing. So I played with these dies some more. So there's so much to this little bundle. I've, I've played a little bit here and he, here and there. And as each time I try a different card, I get to use some of the more of the pieces. And so I wanted to use the um, two pieces that you could create a curtain with, since it kind of looks like our little guy is um, singing karaoke or something. So this is gonna go on the inside. So I did a wood grain. We're gonna pretend he's someplace with just a, a, a wood wall behind him. One of the things you can do with watercolor um, pencils is add color. So I'm kind of laying this sideways so I get that edge of the, um, the point of the pencil. So I'm just kind of highlighting, adding some more color and it's it's coming up on the top of those. And so you could kind of leave that, see how it just kind of accented um, the colors a little bit. Or you could also take your blender pen then and just give it a little more color. So don't forget, you can use those watercolor pencils, even if you don't feel like coloring in stamped images. Okay, so this is going to be the background. So let's create a little stage here. This space inside and on the back where you would want to put your message, that's what this piece is for. 
is three and a fourth by four to get that nice, perfect little spot there. Okay, so that's the inside. And I have some early espresso to just make the stage floor. That way he's not sitting out in the middle of nowhere. Pop him up. Okay, finishing him off on this card, let's just add a little bit of stamping on the front. So these little pieces, these little strips right here are a half inch, so you could cut um, four inch by three eighths or a fourth or, or a half if you wanted to kind of fill this up. You could add designer series paper I'm just going to take the little music note stamp and create a little background. So this is crumb cake ink on from cake cardstock. Okay, I think we got, there we go. So let's put these two together. line up the edges and press where the tear tape is. Like that. Okay, so when it stands up, it's gonna look like that. And then when you put it in your envelope, it'll go flat. be really cute if you have that little word bubble um, stamp set. All right, so let's finish this off and we'll make our curtains. So I already took the time to cut out that die twice and this is Azure Afternoon cardstock. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive around the outside so that can sit on the outside of my square. I should just put it here that way I don't go over like that. <laughs> don't those curtains just change it right into a wow and then this little piece here can either go in the front or you could put it in the back depending on how you want your curtain to look I'm going to trim it. We'll go right there. I thought they measured that a little bit better. It's a little short, but that's okay. All eyes are gonna be on that turtle. Cheryl, I'm the same way. Um, Cheryl said she goes through phases where she uses the pencils a lot. A lot. Um, they were one of her first purchases, and I agree, it makes, they're so easy to use. It's a great thing um, getting started with your 
um, your line art images. Okay, let's let that hold. Before I move it around. Okay, so we just need a greeting on this and I'm going to put that right here on the top and we'll use our, um, this comes in the stamp set, something great to celebrate you. So um, Cheryl, who I was just talking about, she actually um, demonstrated these cards at our last um, gathering of demonstrators that I had with my demonstrators. And that's what inspired me. I was like, I haven't made a diorama card um, either. Judy says she hasn't made one for a long time. I hadn't either. And I forgot just how delightful <laughs> um, they are to make. All right, so here's our little guy, something great to celebrate great for displaying and then you can put your message on the back and what do you think so I had to make a little stage for this ballerina as well and so I did a very similar card with the ballerina isn't she cute Got a little sparkle. And then I wanted to create a little diorama with this cute little skunk. And he's just looking outside. So that's like a little window. He's looking, using his binoculars. Okay. Diorama cards, so easy to make, so satisfying. Okay, so that's our first watercolor and fun fold information. So let's switch gears for a minute. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the adhesives, uh, specifically the ones that you're going to get in your reward this month. And so this project is actually not gonna have any water coloring on it, um, but this is kind of a fun fold, except it's not a card. It's, a, it's like a, a treat bag. And it uses, um, it's a gift card holder using a treat bag. That's what I meant to say. I saw this idea a long time ago. Um, Patty Bennett made some cute little Christmas gift card holders out of the treat bags that we had way back when. And so cute. Every time that Stampin' Up! carries a treat bag, I always bring back this um, idea back around. So I was looking for, um, since this treat bag, this comes in a set with all the in colors. So you get five of each color. So you get 25 bags in each of the in colors. So you can do lots of things with these. Obviously treat bags are fun to have. So I wanted to do something with boho blue and I found this combination on my color coach. It has Misty Moonlight and Pebble Path. So I brought those colors in. And then I wanted to do some stamping and make this a birthday um, gift card holder. So we're going to use beautiful balloons. And we're going to stamp some of these images. Okay, so this is boho blue. And 
This is Pebbled Path. This is Misty Moonlight. And then we're going to stamp this little uh, ribbon in Pebbled Path. I got that all. And then I'm going to take Knight of Navy because that really goes with this palette too. It's just like a neutral. So I can stamp Yay You and have that show up. We're going to cut all these out. I think I am done with the ink pads, so let's put those away. Isn't this a pretty color combination? I mean, it's just, it's very simple, um, almost monochromatic. You add the Knight of Navy in there, but the Pebbled Path just kind of really looks pretty. time to get this one. Alright, so stick this over here for now. Actually, let's go ahead and do this part. All right, so we're going to set those beautiful cutouts aside. And while I have the um, <clears throat> stamp and cut and emboss machine, we're going to make a focal point with our Celebrate dies. And we're going to use some of these adhesives. So Let's see, here are um, the adhesive sheets that are in my little reward this month. They're six by 12, you can cut them down in whatever size you want. And basically it's just a really thin adhesive that you can apply to big pieces of cardstock. And so what I usually do, I end up using all kinds of little bits of it. I just cut my adhesive sheet down to whatever size cardstock I need. And then you peel off the one side and you attach it to your cardstock. And then what it does 
is turn your cardstock into um, potential like sticker cutouts because that adhesive's on the back. Okay, so we're gonna do the celebrate in white, and then I want um, this is the mat for that word. I want that to be popped up. So we're going to use the foam adhesive sheets. So this works in a very similar way. There, you can pull off both sides and both sides of the foam are sticky. So this is um, about the same dimension as a Stampin' Dimensional, but it's solid. So I'm gonna stick my Knight of Navy cardstock on there. And I'm just gonna cut out of this sheet here. Save, save that for the next project or whatever. So now I've got a foam piece here for that. So um, the adhesive sheets are really helpful um, for anything that has a lot of detail where gluing it with liquid glue would be your only other option and maybe um, be messy because it's a word or something that has a lot of space in it. Lori, I'm just using pieces. These are just little tiny pieces of washi tape that I have. Um, and I just use them over and over again. I just keep them on there. She's asking what I'm holding down. Okay, let's get rid of our pieces we don't need and see what we have. Okay, lots of pieces. This is going to be Sweet. Okay, so let's put these together. Okay, that's garbage. So here's my whisper basic white. Um, word with the adhesive sheet on the back so that now I can just pull this off and it will stick to the mat here which is going to be sticky and popped up. sides there. All right. So I don't have to worry about putting glue on there because it's already sticky. That's that's the joy of the adhesive sheets. this nice little focal point. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on one of these elongated hexagons. And I think we're ready to start assembling this. So this is really easy. You don't have to actually use um, and make a score line. You just wanna fold your bag in half so that you've got a pocket here and then you've got a, about um, a half inch between the top of the bag 
and this back so that you will have two pockets. If you want to measure, it is three and five eighths, but you can really eyeball it. So I am, this is the front of the bag because there's a seam here and I'm just folding it so the seam's going to be on the inside. So we could use our tear tape to hold that together. Or liquid glue. What's great about this um, little concept is you get a pocket here and then you get a pocket behind that. So you've got two pockets to play with. I'm gonna punch a large circle out of this coordinating paper. All right, so what do we put in our pockets? So we need to have um, something for the gift card to sit on, that's what this piece is going to be. And then I like to stick a little card in the back. So this card is four by seven, so four inches by seven scored at three and a half. So the finished size when it's closed is four by three and a half and that just fits so cute back in that pocket. This is actually four, actually I, may, I trimmed it a little bit so it would be slightly smaller. It's three and three fourths by three. There'll be a PDF so you can have all that. All right, so that's what's gonna fit in the pocket. So we really just need to decorate our focal point and then decorate our cards. So I'm gonna cover this with some another piece of the boho blue. So we're gonna use all the little different patterns of boho blue. So that will stick up in the pocket. And then we're gonna put one of our balloons. Sticking up so we see it in the pocket. got a place to put your message and then this is where you attach the gift card it's perfectly sized um, for a gift card to sit on there and so you can just take a couple glue dots if if you don't have any sticky and attach it front or back depending on how much you want to decorate but we'll add another um, balloon here so I want to make sure it's kind of layered off to the side right there like that okay so the gift card can just kind of go right above there but then when they take it off they'll still have that cute little tail showing all right, so we've got a little bit of layered balloons here. And then we'll put this one on the front. And I wanna pop, pop that up. our string for the balloon here. Not much of it will show, but it'll kind of finish it off. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna attach our focal point to the front. So I'm just gonna put a little belly band. This will kind of keep these sides um, together as well as just look kind of cute. 
So we'll bring in another pop of that Pebble Path. This is 3 fourths of an inch uh, by 11 inches, and I'm overlapping it in the front because it's going to get covered up by this. So the ends of this, um, this isn't the smallest one. Let's take a look at those. This is the second to smallest elongated hexagon, but the ends are three fourths of an inch. So I really liked how that looked. I can't wait to put it on a, a card like that, this little focal point here. And then this is just gonna, I haven't attached to this belly band yet. You could not attach it, just kind of leave it um, loose, but I'm going to attach it. I'm going to add a little bit of more of that accent back here. And I just wanted to get everything kind of situated before I put that in exactly where I wanted it to be. Perfect. And now I'm going to, I'm going to put some glue back here just to keep that in place. Okay. So you could fold cardstock similarly. This is just a fun, clever thing to do with, with those treat bags. But you could definitely definitely just use cardstock or designer series paper in the same way. So I'm gonna make a matching envelope. This will be for somebody very special. how it fits perfectly inside a regular envelope. So you could mail it. Um, you'd have to, if you dimension, you know, give it as much dimension as I did with those foam, you'll have to put extra adhesive on it. Uh, but that way you've got a nice little um, pocket for the gift card. And then you've also got a little mini card that you can decorate any way you want to. And We just need some little uh, embellishments. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Okay, so there's our finished of a fun fold more like a gift card holder we also we did a, a version of this project at um, our last team meeting um, I demonstrated that so here's a, just some other versions in different colors such a fun little way to give a gift card. All right. So you can still you can put oh there's my uh, <laughs> Amazon card. You can um, make a little hole and attach ribbon instead of the balloons. That's a nice way to add a little bit of uh, ribbon to it as well. All right, all the, the dimensions and the directions will be on the PDF for this play date. All right, so let's just talk about um, our watercolor pencils again and how you could um, create your own um, words in colors to match your project. I keep putting things in um, away and I'm not ready to be done with them.
<laughs> there it is looking for my blender pen. So I just took uh, Granny Apple Green and Coastal Cabana and Flirty Flamingo and just made stripes on the cardstock. This is basic white. And then I'm just gonna blend it kind of all together. So you can blend it as much as you want. It's gonna just kind of look like a little bit of a watercolor wash. And then I took the same die, the Celebrate die, and cut out that word so that the word has a nice little watercolored effect. And let's just make this into a card, okay? Let's, um, let's do a little... Let's do a little focal point cluster since that is now our, that's our thing, right? Um, so I'm gonna make my own plaid background. And so what I did is I took the sketched plaid background stamp and I inked it with pool party ink. And then I took a piece of white and I did the process upside down so I could get it and created a pool party plaid. But then I took the same color of watercolor pencil, the um, Flirty Flamingo and the Granny Apple Green. And I just, with a ruler in between, just gave a line of color. And then with the the blender pen, you can go back and kind of smudge that line like that. You get kind of a, your own little coordinating plaid that has a nice little watercolor effect to it. Isn't that pretty? So the base of the card is Coastal Cabana. And then we're gonna create a little focal point cluster on there. So when I use the adhesive sheets for the basic white to cut out the Celebrate, um, I went ahead and did a whole sheet of lemon lime twist because this is a color I end up cutting a lot of things out of and I used the dye, this beautiful um, leaf dye to cut out. This is another great example of where it's so much easier than putting the glue on if you have the adhesive sheet. And so I cut out that. I put the adhesive sheet on the cardstock, laid my die on there, cut out the die, and now my die has adhesive, or my die cut has adhesive on the back. So this is actually gonna be the base of my focal point cluster. It's just so pretty. Okay, and we've got our secondary base there. We'll pop up. Doesn't that plaid turn out so pretty? I cannot wait to try this in some different colors. Okay, so here's our secondary shape. Where do I want this? Put it right there. 
like that. And then I was so excited as I took all of that time, which was just totally worth it. Remember, I cut all these out for our focal point clusters and lots of bright colors. So I already had leaves in Coastal Cabana and I had flowers in Flirty Flamingo and it was like, it was like my past self was taking good care of my future self and making life easier. I don't usually do that for myself, but it worked out so lovely this time. So we're gonna just add some, some greenery and then we'll add this little accent here. See, these would be nice as long as you didn't want to, you know, stick them um, up with dimensionals. It'd be nice to have these leaves with the yeah, adhesive sheets on the back, too. Okay, so one little accent, and then we'll add our embellishments. So when you purchase adhesive sheets, let's say you want to get some, um, you're going to get one whole sheet from me. I'm going to cut it in half. That's my reward, um, just so that I can mail it. But this is six inches by 12 inches. You actually get 10 of them. Um, when you purchase the package of, and I think they're, I think they're ten dollars, so they last a really long time. I'm going to do two since that's kind of green, kind of gives us that visual triangle there. Okay, let me hold this part up. You can see it closer. Susan, I agree. This could be our, our color combo of the summer. It's so refreshing. I would like um, a shirt to wear with these colors together. Maybe a plaid. That would be so pretty in a blouse. Okay, I have one more thing to show you. going to do some more watercoloring with our bird's eye view. And again, Cheryl, if you're still watching, Cheryl Sorensen, you have inspired a lot with my um, play date today. So I'm so happy I get to, <laughs> I get to hang out with you and learn from you too. So um, Cheryl had given me this adorable card um, a, a little while ago. Isn't that so cute? And it has a fun, just kind of a quick and easy fun fold, right? All right, so we're going to make a version of this card today. Um, I don't know what this fun fold is called either, but it kind of just makes that nice little house shape. This is definitely a squash fold, so a center squash fold card maybe. So how you do it is you have to have a piece of a half sheet of cardstock that is cut four and a quarter by 11 because you need that long piece. And then what you're going to do, so, and I've already scored it in half at five and a half. And from that score line, you're gonna measure one and a half inches on either side. So I'm going to, Zoom in just a little bit here. I'm gonna stick one and a half inches right at the score line here, and then I'm gonna go to three, and then back to, to, to zero, so that I have one and a half on that side, one and a half on that side. Just makes it a little bit easier. 
All right, so one and a half inches from each side off of the score line. And then with your scoring blade, you're going to score diagonally between those marks. So I'm just lining up those marks on this cutting line here, but not going to cut, I'm going to score. And then we'll turn and do the same thing the other way. So it's going to create this X and it will meet in the middle at that score line. So it looks like that. And then you just have to fold it. So I'm going to fold the card in half. Okay, and then in the opposite direction, I'm going to fold on those diagonal lines. That just makes it easier to pop if you do them in different directions. So the the score line for the card goes one way and then the um, other two go in the opposite direction. And then that little squash fold is going to go right in the center. How cute is that? So easy too. So now I have a piece that's four and a quarter by five and a half. So just the, your basic card front. I'm going to cover the front of the little house here. With some blueberry bushel. Ooh, which one do I want? I think I'm going to do the bigger one. Blueberry bushel gingham paper. This is the glorious gingham set of designer series paper. Blueberry bushel is one of the colors. So this will help you see. So um, by just turning those corners in, um, it makes that house shape, but from top to bottom from that point, it's still five and a half inches. So it is the right size to fit into our envelopes. And we'll just cut that off. Okay, so let's give our house a window. So I'm gonna pick a circle. We've got this fun piece we can stick somewhere to use later. We have our center. I want a, um, a frame around that. And so I took two sizes of, I took this same size circle and then I took the very next larger one and I put them together at the same time and ran them through so that I could get this frame. I also put on that foam adhesive before I did it so that it would pop up evenly. And the thing about the foam, I don't think I said that, but the foam adhesive is really nice because it, um, it makes little things much sturdier. Whereas if you just kind of put mini dimensionals around, it would it would hold it and it would it would um, it would absolutely work. But this is very sturdy because the whole thing is popped up. If that makes sense. Okay, so there's our little house, and we'll put on some put on some a roof. So this is a three fourths inch strip. 
I'm just going to line that up. I'm going to overlap on both sides so that I can cut that off. And this is blueberry bushel. And then we'll do the same on this side. <laughs> Cheryl, yes, you are helping me out with these projects. Cheryl is amazing. All right, so we still have this cute little um, bird set to use with this, but I wanted to um, pull in this new one, the bird's eye view and um, play with that. And then I wanted to just talk a little bit about watercolor pencils with watercolor paper and how that changes things um, a little bit. So one of the other papers you're going to get in my little adhesive thing isn't really an adhesive, but it's sticky, so I'm counting it as an adhesive, but it, it works. Um, for masking. Okay, so I'm just going to create a masking. So this, let's, let me show you the whole package. These are the masking papers. They are five by seven. And so I just have this little piece I've been chopping off of. One side is just, it's like copy paper. And then the other side is shiny. And that's the part that peels off, leaving that paper sticky. So it works like a uh, post-it note essentially or a sticky note so you would just stamp on the paper side and then cut it out so that you have a little sticky piece to use for masking and so what I wanted to do is just create uh, a stack of books that our bird could sit on and I wanted to mask the book. So I'm gonna do two stacks, so there's six books, and I want the bottom three to look like they're tucked under the top three. So I'm going to stamp the top three first because that's going to be the thing that is closest to my eye, like that. And then this is what you use the masking paper on. See, I've already used this one several times. That's why there's a bunch of lines on there. And then I'm just going to stamp over my masking paper by just a little bit. So that those books are stacked perfectly. And then we'll put our bird on top. All right, so that's how I masked using the masking paper. But I actually pre-did this and I made him on watercolor paper. So with, I think Judy already mentioned this. Um, I have mentioned stays on ink is what you want to use to stamp on um, with when you're using water because it won't run like Memento will potentially run if you, especially if you use a lot of water. So um, what you don't want to do is with a photopolymer stamp set like this with this clear rubber is use it with stays on it. It really soaks into these um, and it just they're a little bit more it's a little bit more of a fragile rubber than the red rubber so um, to avoid that I mean, you can use it, but they'll be very stained and you won't be able to get it off. And it, again, it's gonna degrade your stamp images. Um, you can just use Memento and then be real careful to not, um, to not use a lot of water and go over the edges. Or you can do what I did here on watercolor paper. I stamped 
in uh, Versamark ink and then I used black embossing powder. And so because this is watercolor paper and I'm gonna use a lot of water, I, I really wanted to make that embossed and not risk it using memento. But I'm gonna show you how it looks with memento so you'll get to see. I hope that makes sense. So what we're gonna do, instead of using the blender pen this time, since we're on watercolor paper and you really wanna use a lot of water when you use watercolor paper, I'm gonna use the water painters to um, color him. And so let's get our colors. So I'm gonna use, um, there's actually three blues between the two sets. One is balmy blue. And so I'm gonna color his face balmy blue. And then I want a little bit darker blue on the wings. And then I'm gonna specifically outline them with Knight of Navy to make him very blue little shading there and then his tummy is going to it's going to be like a bluebird so we'll do a kind of an orange pinky stomach and then where those are those little lines are we'll make that darker and then we just need to outline the books so that's red yellow. We'll just make a nice colorful array of books. Okay, so now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So now with the water painter, I'm gonna use a lot more water. And I actually like to use more water than what comes out of the water painter. And when you squeeze the barrel, you get a nice um, burst of water there. But if you have actually some water, it, it goes a lot easier. So we're gonna add a lot of water and blend. With watercolor paper, you really can't um, destroy the top surface of the watercolor paper. It's meant to hold a ton of water. So you can add a lot of water to it. Anytime that you feel like you have too much water, you just blot on the paper towel. So again, it, um, it dissolves the pencil and then you can just spread it around and the difference with the watercolor paper is that you can use a lot more water and work, you know, work it into the, the, the paper. All right, so let's go to the bird. And the, with a watercolor paper, it always looks much better once it dries, because then you get to, you see this, is, this pink is starting to dry, you can start to see the different little variations in the color, in the shading. And don't forget to dab, just dab you'll feel like an artist. All right, I think the only thing I did not do was the sides of the book here. So I'm gonna just make those a little bit gray. Oh, 
Okay, so we'll let him dry and we'll finish this card. Here is, so to contrast, so this is like what I stamped for you first, where I showed you the masking. It's basic white paper with stays on, or, I'm sorry, with memento ink. And I went ahead and used the watercolor pencils. And you can see the black did not run, but I was real careful as I did it to not really go over the black ink. And so it, it works it just fine. If you have a photopolymer stamp like stamps it like this and you wanna use watercolor pencils, don't let it, if you don't have stays on or whatever, don't let it dissuade you from, um, you can make it work. All right, so we're gonna put hello in the middle there. And just to make sure I get it straight and where I want it, I'm just gonna make a little pencil mark here that I can erase. Okay. Was I right? This is kind of a hodgepodge um, play date today. We've got all kinds of things going on. Let's see if he's, he's almost dry. So we're gonna go ahead and put him on there and we'll just be real careful. So he's gonna need to be popped up so that he can match the foam um, adhesive that I have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a couple right here because I know he's gonna cover that. Add some more here. Watercolor paper takes a while to dry. I definitely am rushing this little bird. I should let it sit or use my heat tool. And then we're going to bring these back because these are blueberry bushel embellishments. And we'll just add a couple of those because we can. side. Okay, what do you think of our little um, inside squash fold little birdhouse? All right, let me bring Cheryl's back because hers is so cute. All right, so think of some other ways that you could use this um, little birdhouse shape. So here's another one that's like a birdhouse. This was also um, colored with the watercolor pencils. And then um, this is the same design except the um, door I made with the countryside corners and those dies. I just hung this off as I cut my um, window, which is essentially a door. 
anyway, so you can you can do a lot with the the different size um, holes or the window, or you don't even have to make a window. But wouldn't this be cute as a little um, doghouse, as a little playhouse, as a um, welcome card for somebody who just moved, or um, a little house like welcoming a new baby home. I think there's lots of things that you could do with this. Okay. All right, did I throw enough at you today in my hodgepodge way? I wanted to just really play with those watercolor pencils, have a little therapeutic coloring, but also let me zoom out so I can put all the projects out. All right, so I am going to uh, let you go, but I'm also going to read the comments here if you want to stay and chat for a second. So definitely if you have watercolor pencils, get them back out, create yourself um, a little, create for yourself a little swatch, um, do some therapy coloring, practice with those colors, break them in. I forgot to show you. I did both of the assortments also on watercolor paper. Um, so you can really see, so here's the same colors on basic white versus watercolor paper. And you can see how they just, the watercolor paper just gives a, a different effect. So just think about um, what you want to use them on. So do a swatch. And we've got three fun fold activities today. I'll throw them all on a PDF that you can download probably tomorrow, starting tomorrow, and you'll have the diorama card, and you will have this center squash fold little house card, and then you will have the dimensions for this treat bag holder. Treat gift card, what are we calling it? A gift card holder made out of a treat bag. All right! Let me look at the comments. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for um, being with me as we played with these ideas. Thank you, Lori. Hey, Mary. Hi, Sue. Hey, Tiffany. Hi, Deborah. You are welcome so much. Oh, I hope you you try these fun folds. What I love, I am so excited. Um, it's really exciting to in the in our Facebook group when you come and you share um, a card that you made with something that we did on a play date. Yes, Liz, you're absolutely right. She's talking about um, when you are using watercolor paper and you emboss. You can use tons of water with embossing um, because the raised embossing from the image keeps that water inside the area that you're coloring so it doesn't bleed. Um, this I had a little bit of bleeding, but that's because I was messing with it and tipping it before it was dry. But yes, that was a good point. Mixed media paper, yes, that that is a good, that's a nice um, solid paper too. Great for watercolor pencils or markers. It's nice when you have a pad of that, then you can just kind of play. Um, I like that idea, Tiffany. What do I have in the bottom of my cup holding my pencils? I have lent, a lentil mix. <laughs> it has some lentils in there and they're small. So it's like red lentils and, um, they had expired and so I'm just using them. It kind of keeps that those pencils sticking up and then you, the tips don't hit the bottom of the cup and accidentally break. Hi, France. Hey, Judy. Hey, Nydia. Thank you so much. Hi, Glenda. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Shelly. Oh, bird's eye view, Shelly. Yeah, I've I've been seeing that stamp set everywhere. You know what? This is one of the cutest, um, cutest little stamp. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I forgot. <laughs> I cut out, so I used my stays on. 
hold for a second. I use my stays on. And um, because this is a quick drying um, ink, because it is acid based or whatever is makes it, you can stamp on other things like plastic or wood or um, tile and it will dry. Well, I cut out the little glasses um, once I stamped them on a window sheet and cut them out and I meant to put them on our little bird here. We have to finish him. Can't believe I forgot his specs. But I thought they'd be cute if they were shiny. <laughs> okay, hold glue. go. <laughs> now the card's finished. Can you see his reflective glasses? <laughs> oh my. <sighs> Why is stamping so much fun? It just is. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you for all your delightful comments. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, you're watching this um, past the live, please still leave me a comment. I read them all and I try to respond to as many as I can. So um, I appreciate you until next time when we play again. I'll see you then. Thank you so much.